Welcome back. Uh, attempt at a Highland scene. I think so. Wet the paper over. Oh, that brush is a little bit tainted from the last one. Okay, it's Fabriano, 130 pound weight, 15 inches by 11. The, the Royal Ransom Hake, the Royal Ransom Palette, uh, Lemon Yellow, Raw Sienna, Lisbon Crimson, Light Red, Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, Paint Spray, Burnt Sienna, a food display, food display tray, very inexpensive, a very good last forever. Right, I'll put a bit of Sienna into all over it. And I'll just put a bit of bit of burnt umber and Payne's grey. Just so I get some warms and right, now we do the sky. I'm going to use uh, a bit of, bit of alizarin. Oh no, maybe a bit of burnt sienna. Right now, uh, ultramarine and Payne's grey. A bit of light red. Nice dark patch because I want this to reflect on the landscape. It's going a bit darker. Well, the brush has split a little bit. Right, now we'll put in some background. Uh, I'll have to dry it off a little bit, so put your mute on. Go. Watermark there, there must have been a bit of loose water just dropped, dropped in there, so we'll there's a little bit of water in there just to. Just had some different layers in in here. Oh, that's rough, isn't it?
Right, then you know what, some real good dark greens. I've tried to dry this, but I'm going to reclip it first. This is experimental, this one, with all these dark colours. So, mute now. That's the thing with the Fabriano, it doesn't really take a lot of dragging down with clean water. So I'm just going to go over that again with a bit of, bit of blue. Right, that's a bit better. Right, now I want to put in some really dark greens now. Payne's grey like mad. Burnt umber. Let's get these in now. These are the trees in shadow. Shadow. Right, I'm going to put in a bit, bit of background, but a oh, heavier blue. Let's uh, flick out some of this here. Didn't like that. So I want to get that dark on the top of this, but you've got to make sure your brush is dry enough not to dilute the mix that you're going to put put in. Put it on. No. What is a hide and seam? There's nothing to stop you any time mixing a bit of um, white in with your colours on another palette, of course. That way you can you can. Um, so it's a sort of a, good, a bit of gouache. You, you can superimpose some greens over there, over these heavier trees, 
but you couldn't really call it a watercolour then, it would be a mixed media. But, uh, let's see what it looks like in a mound. I'll use the blue mound, uh, a bit of musket tape there. This exercise in loose, fast and free watercolour really. I haven't signed it yet. Might not be worth the signature. There we are, the Highland scene. Uh, I'll give it a bit of a signature. I'll find a signature brush. I don't want to. Okay. So. What have we got? Very roughly drawn mountains, a, a very brooding sky. Uh, with wet and wet, you, you do it in one go, really, the sky. But if, but you can, when it's bone dry, you dry it off, you can go over it again and get other clouds. Have a look at Roland Hilda, some of his complicated watercolour skies. He would lift out the sun, then he would dry it and then paint over it, another wash and then dob the colour with a bit of tissue again you, and you can get a light sun coming through your clouds but it's so very subtle. You'll have to look at some Roland Hilda galleries or photographs to have a look, see what I mean. But he's one of the best watercolourists colorists I've ever had the privilege of, of uh, enjoying working from. He did some instruction books and I used to use them about 35, 30, over 35 years ago. Uh, and I learnt a lot from him. I learnt a lot of my tree shapes, and, and I, it took me a long time to, to learn how to do it. But uh, it's practice, 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 practice. Just have a go, have a go, push yourself. And if you don't like it, turn it over and start on the other side. And then, if that doesn't work, you can paint over it in acrylic or oil. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.